Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video what I want to do is actually cover how to set up some simple decals inside of Unreal Engine 5. So I have started here with uh, one already applied to the wall, uh, but basically yeah, I have this uh, Megascans wall that I grabbed um, from the Quixel bridge and I want to also just use, at least for this uh, demo, I'm going to use the um, a Megascan uh, graffiti piece that I found on there as well. So how I'm going to actually start with this is I want to kind of talk about what a, a decal is. And so this will be a almost like a projection decal. Um, they're also called deferred decals inside of Unreal Engine. Um, but this is one that's actually being projected onto a mesh. Um, there's also geometry decals, which are uh, if you had like a flat plane that you brought in that was hovering over your existing model, um, and then you basically apply a material with a mask and everything uh, with it, um, that would be more so along the lines of a geometry decal. But with the deferred decal or projection decal, as we see here, um, basically this is yeah just being projected from a bounding box onto the wall, and uh, that's what we're getting. So overall, to set one up, it's actually uh, quite simple. I'm going to actually just make one from scratch. So I'm going to open my content drawer down bottom, and uh, I already brought in the actual uh, texture maps for it. Um, I'm using this one here, which just has a albedo, and then uh, you can also see that, uh, let me dock and lay out, and then we can also have the uh, opacity, which is just a, a white and black uh, mask, and this is going to basically mask it out as well, um, but I'm just going to right click and create a new material. Let's name it decal uh, 01, so there we go. And then I'm going to open it up. So I wanted to show you how quickly uh, you can basically make one of these. Um, but if I click on my actual attributes for uh, the, the decal, uh, right now this is just a basic material. Um, it's not going to work properly if we just have it uh, simple like that. So we do need to change the actual material type. So I'm going to go down here uh, once I've cl clicked on the, the main attributes for the material. And I'm going to change the surface over to deferred decal. Um, now we can see that it's dropped all of the options off except for world position, um, but we are getting an error basically saying material using the deferred decal domain uh, can only use blend modes translucent, alpha composite, or modulate. Um, and basically that's just saying, yeah, blend mode here uh, cannot be opaque. So I need to switch this. I'm going to switch it to translucent. Um, and we should be good to go now. So yeah, you'll see that we have a couple of options come back and some of them we didn't have previously. So uh, now that we have that, all I need to do really is bring in my um, albedo or my uh, base color and then my opacity. So keeping this one, yeah, pretty simple just because uh, like only need two maps to get like a decent pass. Uh, now, of course, like if you want a lot more like roughness variation uh, or you're trying to do something with more metallic, uh, of course you can have a lot more um with that stuff but yeah just keeping it simple with like the overall look of a decal but i can plug this in with my rgb to base color and then this one of course can go into opacity so now i hit save and uh in an essence like at the most basic level the decal is now made um, now how to actually apply it to my scene uh, the easiest way I uh, like to use is actually just dragging the material out. Um, typically on other like assets and stuff that would either apply material. Um, but this way, when it's a deferred decal, you'll find that it actually creates the decal itself. So I drag it in and we can see here now that I have a bounding box that has um, been brought in. So I can actually edit this a little bit. Um, there's a thing or two, at least since I drug it in this way, uh, that I'll need to slightly adjust. Um, but overall, what I want to do is rotate it 90 degrees, and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees that way as well. Um, you'll see the square aspect ratio, and of course, the actual uh, map is a bit wider. Uh, one thing just quickly you can do for that is actually just copying um, and placing that into uh, the Y axis. And you'll see now that the Y uh, is accurate 
uh, to the, the width and all um, of what the actual uh, texture we brought in. And yeah, I can just lock that back again um, because that's the decal size. But um, yeah, and with that as well, as you notice when I click on this, uh, it does bring up the attributes. Uh, there's a couple of like features that you can kind of play with over here. Um, but at like a yeah basic level, I wanted to change the decal size there. I can also still use like the the editing in um, side of the actual like viewport. Uh, but sometimes yeah the how it scales can be a little bit weird. Um, if you have this locked over here, this scale, you can also just nicely like scale it down. Um, one thing is you definitely like don't need it to be like this uh, deep. Um, because what you'll find is, let's say that I drag it over here, um, if it's too deep and uh, yeah, I don't have it disabled, then you're going to have it where it's overlapping on all assets, which could be nice, but for this case, I wouldn't want it actually on that post. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do that. Either just make sure your decal is much more flush, something like that. Uh, or additionally, if you don't want something to actually get a decal, um, so let's say that I'm trying to put some dirt around the edge down here, uh, so forth, you can actually go and click on an asset like this one, and I can search for decal uh, here, and there's a checkbox where it says receives decals. I can click on that, and now it will not receive any decals uh, in the scene at all. So. That can be another way to disable decals for certain meshes uh, if you're working and yeah, it feels like it's kind of overlapping on stuff you don't want it to touch. Um, yeah, that's one way as well. So now that yeah, I have that, I'm gonna move it over here. And you can see that we have yeah, a pretty decent decal. It's grabbing the normal information still from underneath um, and we can uh, put it here and have our, our actual like graffiti so one other thing uh, if you feel like let's say I wanted this dirt to be in front of the AFK one um, that's gonna come down to the sort order so uh, as you hover over it it'll let you know um, but basically the sort order is how you can sort between multiple decals and the higher values going to draw later um, or on top so if I wanted this one to be in front, I believe if I click one here, so this one probably has a default of zero and then this one's going to be one. Um, looks like it, yeah, it kind of crashed into the wall a little bit, but uh, yeah, so now sort order one, it's in front of the AFK. So uh, that's how you can also work with the, the depth difference. Um, and then, yeah, one other thing, just in regards to decals and using them, um, the Quixel Bridge does have a lot of great decals uh, just by default that you could bring in, uh, whether it be like some concrete breakup or um, some like even uh, tire tracks for your ground or something. Uh, but I wanted to show real quick if I just open up the Quixel Bridge, you can go over here and find decals in it. Um, and Quixel Bridge is uh, the, the bridge for uh, Quixel Mega Scans. So you'll find the 3D assets, uh, textures, materials, um, and you can just drag them into your scene, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, I uh, basically filtered it to show only decals. Now I can go down here, and uh, this is where I found the graffiti, um, but I actually just downloaded the textures because I wanted to show how to set one up. Um, but if you actually just drag and drop this into your scene, uh, then it would already be set up for you, which is pretty nice. But um, yeah, I wanted to go over and maybe find some street stuff, uh, like debris or something, um, maybe here. And yeah, there's potholes. I think I'm going to look real quick for gravel. And then I can also put decal. So uh, yeah, it's really nice for um, basically being able to edit it in that way um, where you can really just bring stuff in. Um, but yeah, I wanted to kind of throw something like this onto my actual ground that I have. So there's also road dust. That one's actually pretty cool, but yeah, I think it's a decal actually. 
So I'll try it out. Um, might not work, might work. So I'm gonna just drag this over a little bit. And if I just drag it in, um, we should see that it might take a second for it to be brought in. So there we go. We have our um, decal in now. Uh, it has a pretty large bounding box, I believe, as well. Um, but yeah, you can see how it kind of is messing on the wall uh, there. But I think something like this could be useful for, you know, getting some more uh, variation on this ground, which um, is like pretty unfinished like material, but, you know, getting just more, uh, I guess, yes, yeah, stuff overall. I can turn these off to where they don't have decals. Um, I think they might be in a, a group or so. Um, where's my bounding box? Okay. Yeah, so this will be a better situation to actually use the, the squishing. Uh, that way it's only really affecting the ground. Um, and then once this is models, I can turn off where decals don't affect it. That way I don't have uh, that little weird error that's kind of going on. Um, but as you see, like, yeah, just really quickly, I have uh, some more detail being brought in here. Um, the nice thing about the, the mega scans or the Quixel Bridge uh, decals too is the uh, actual material itself has um, material instances that you can pretty uh, nicely customize. So this is it here and the material that is set up. And I can go in here if I wanted to and add a color overlay if I wanted to try to match it a little bit quicker um, to my ground, which it's not too bad. Um, but there's also some other stuff uh, that could really yeah, benefit so the the tiling if you wanted it to tile more um, and so forth so yeah i think it's a really cool tool to be able to bring in um, decals and just decals overall i think are that like that next level of detail um, where maybe you can't uniquely um, place stuff in your area or it's like a tiling texture um, and just overall it's it's really nice to uh, really yeah bring some some unique moments and uh, just details to your piece without having to put it into the existing model or uh, texture. So, but yeah, that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to drop them below and I will see you next time.